The Debris of Attention is a fancy digital editorial that plays with the aesthetics of archaic web gimmicks. Intrusive pop-ups and sidebars, floating menus, hostile fonts, and autoplay audio. The reader can declutter the project from these undesirable elements by clicking or hovering on them and find some tips on ethical web design under. Several types of animation were combined in this project. Objects begin rotating or twinkling on load, and they disappear on hover. The semantic overload chapter comes with floating elements that can be removed with a click, but with a page reload, they all come back. The visual style is bright and cheerful, aim to avoid any possible feeling of moralizing. In this video, we'll walk you through its layout and animation and recreate the first few pages step by step. We proceed with the grid. We do not make it from scratch, but use a pre-built set instead. The default 12 column grid will work for the screen with a headline. For our convenience, we're enabling the sizes feature it will help us adjust the size of objects to the grid. We're increasing the page height. We're switching to the project settings and enabling the scale layout. It scales the project content to the width of different screens. 3600 pixels is the default width of the scaling. You can reduce it to the minimum of 1024 pixels or increase to the maximum of 8400 pixels. We are now disabling the navigation arrows and all menu elements. We're done with the basics of the future project and proceed to the heading. Several letters in the heading stick together. To prevent the outlines from overlapping, we've made the headline in advance and are going to upload it into the project as an SVG file. The sizes feature, which we have enabled earlier, helps us adjust the size of the objects in pixels. Let's load each word separately so that later we can place objects between the layers. The heading is saved in the PS Grotesque, a neat and settled font where letters are massive and simple, but not boring. After this, we are adding a subheading. We are now adjusting its parameters, changing the font, its size, line spacing, and tracking. Let's make the text box shorter and set alignment to the center. Now, we are choosing a color from the color palette we've prepared in advance. We are choosing cheerful, bright colors. The project has a blank background and neat, calm structure. So, the colorful headline fits in well and does not destroy the visual integrity of the project. We are aligning the subheading by the center and adjusting its top margin so that it fits the grid and the edges of the text container stuck to it. We are going to use this textile in the future, so we opted to save it now. We are embedding a link in the subheading and editing its style, changing the color of the link and its underlining, making the underlying closer to the text. After this, we are setting the appearance and behavior of the link on hover. Let's create another grid to work with the main text. It comprises several blocks of information, so it needs another layout to present it. We are creating a thick line to mark off the heading and subheading from the zero chapter. As both the texts belong to one page, it is important to separate them visually. Each chapter comes numerated. The style of the numbers is the same as in the text of the subheadings. The last style we've created got applied to the number 
as we haven't created any new texts after we've added the subheading. Now, let's increase the margin of the number to make it fit the grid. We are adding the intro text. Want to learn more about working with texts in ReadyMag? Check out our video tutorial. We are adjusting its parameters. We are saving the style in the Library of Styles. We're done with the text on the first page. After this, we are proceeding to create the first rectangle. We are now setting the thickness and the color of the outline of the rectangle. We are placing the rectangle behind the layer with the headline and switching off the grid by pressing H on the keyboard so that it does not distract us. We are changing its position and adjusting its size. To make the rectangle disappear by mouse hover, we are applying animation on hover. We are setting the opacity, changing from 100 to 0% and reducing duration. Want to learn more about working with animation in ReadyMag? See our tutorial. All shapes, which disappear on mouse hover, should appear back in 60 seconds. To do so, we are adding a second animation step and setting a 60-second delay. Aside from this rectangle, we have a rectangle with rounded corners. By pressing Alt and making a copy of the existing rectangle, then we are changing its position in the layer stack and adjusting its size, radius, outline, and color. Then, we are creating a circle and adjusting its appearance and position. We will use shortcuts to apply animation settings that were created earlier. Let's select the rectangle and press shift Control c Then, select the circle and press shift Control v This shortcut saves your time and with it, you don't have to animate each shape one by one. Then, we are creating the rest of the objects. The project offers shapes with various types of animation. Part of the objects not only disappear on hover, but also move or twinkle. This makes the project more interactive and visually rich. We are adding rotation on load to one of the objects. We are making a 360-degree rotation in 6 seconds and looping this motion. We are adding horizontal motion to this object. We are choosing the first loop option so that the object moves from side to side again and again. Click Preview in the Animation panel to see this exact animation in action. We are creating the animation for the rest of the shapes following the same steps. Then, we are proceeding to making a banner offering users a clue on how to interact with the project. First, we are creating a rectangle. If the guides disturb you and hinder you from adjusting the size of the object precisely, press S to switch off the snap function. To align the object to the center of the screen, we are switching on the fix position function for it and then instantly unlocking it. We are adding text and applying the first textile to it. Then we are changing the color to yellow. We are adding a cross mark. Search for it via the icons panel. Then, we are grouping the objects in order to animate the group as one whole. 
This move also optimizes the organization of layers in the Layers panel. We are adding animation that makes the group disappear by clicking on the cross mark. The first page is completed. Check out how the animated headlines and forms come together with the text under them. Then, we are proceeding to the second page. Note that starting from the first chapter, each text block belongs to a separate page. This way, we don't keep too many widgets on a page and enable separate links for each of them. We are switching on the grid and the snap function and then adding a mark offline. We are adding the number of chapter. Let's switch Reset Style to make the original style apply to it. Then, we are adding the text of the first chapter and applying the proper text style to it. We are aligning it by the grid. Note that it is important to increase the length of the page. We are laying out the bulleted text block so that the part of it that comes before the colon aligns to the left and the other part aligns to the right. To do so, we are splitting the text into paragraphs by clicking the Enter key and adjusting the margins. This way, we are imitating classical organization of bulleted lists with a sequential process. To shorten the first half of the block, we are increasing the left margin. You can also shift margins to get rid of undesirable hyphenation. We do the same for the rest of the paragraphs. We are inserting a bullet from the glyphs panel of the font before the first paragraph. Then, we are applying the first textile to it. We are pasting this bullet before the remaining paragraphs. If you enable the Snap and Sizes function, you will see the distance between widgets in pixels. On the second page, there are some hovering spam banners that the project viewer should close. Now, we will proceed to creating the first spam banner. It consists of two circles, a cross mark, and a text. We are grouping them, applying opacity animation on click to the group, and making the cross mark the animation trigger. On top of that, we are adding on load motion animation.
We are creating other banners the same way as the first one. Now the second page is completed. The third page is similar to the first one, but instead of shapes, it puts on display glyphs. Its layout is similar to the first two pages. All glyphs are available in the Insert panel. Glyphs can be edited as texts. You can adjust the size, color, and outline. They are animated as the shapes on the first page. We are adding all other glyphs to the page. The rest of the pages in this project are made similarly to the first three. You can recreate them by yourself. We hope that by explaining the workflow behind the debris of attention, we will inspire you to make your own creative editorials with ReadyMag. Feel free to use design gimmicks, ideas, and solutions we showed you in your future works. The project was created by ReadyMag editors Svetelina Miteva and Vitaly Volk, along with designer Tanya Yegoshina. In this video, ReadyMag motion designer Varia Fomichova recreates the workflow for this project and showcases the aesthetic and technical solutions that shape its look. Find more tutorials and tips at readymag.com learn.